Hey, peaceful people, Ms. McMahon is here to talk to you about perseverance, responsibility, and self-control as they relate to cooking. So I um, heard from some people who looked at the recipe I put up there for pretzels that they could not find yeast, which is a problem for lots of us in baking right now. So I tried to think about something that we can make that doesn't include yeast. Um, I also thought about how, although we've, my family's gotten a little bit of takeout, we really can't go to restaurants right now. They're all closed. Um, so I had the idea of making something that you enjoy at a restaurant. So with those two things, I thought about making Red Lobster style biscuits and showing you how to make them. Um, so the first two ways I think that this shows perseverance is um, we had to think creatively about not having the supplies we wanted, and we had to think um, creatively about meeting our um, needs when we couldn't go to a restaurant. Then the third thing, you'll see when I'm talking about the recipe, I was missing one of the ingredients, which is dried parsley. So I had to um, stop before I started the recipe, um, go online and figure out how I could substitute what I did have, which was for some reason fresh parsley for the dried parsley. Um, I also am going to talk about responsibility a little bit in this video. One thing I've noticed when we cook in class is that people sometimes really struggle with how to measure. Um, so I'm going to talk off and on through the video about um, how to measure carefully, how to make sure you're completely filling up the cup that you're measuring in and how you're making sure to use the right um, size measurement for the direction. So if it says a half cup, you want to look for something that says a half cup and then you want to fill it completely. You don't want to just put some flour in a whole cup or you don't want to take a half cup but then not fill it. Um, so hopefully you'll see me showing responsibility as I'm making these biscuits and also showing some self-control by trying to be careful and follow the directions. I will also include a printed version of the recipe and I hope you get to try them and that they're delicious. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure we have all the ingredients that we're gonna need for our recipe as well as everything we're gonna need to measure them in terms of equipment. So I've got my flour, my sugar, baking powder, baking soda, salt, garlic powder, milk still in the refrigerator, butter still in the refrigerator, and I pre-measured my cheddar cheese because I had to shred it from a block because I didn't have pre-shredded. Got a bowl, mix it all in. Measuring cup, measuring spoons. So we start with two cups of flour. And a helpful way to measure flour is actually to use a knife or a um, rubber scraper. Scoop up your flour and then use the knife or scraper to level it off so it's nice and even. So if we want a cup of flour, we want it filled absolutely all the way to the top, not just sort of scooped up in the one cup. In this case, we want two cups of flour. Measure a second cup. Level it off. Flour in the bowl. Then, same thing goes with measuring spoons. So we go to our baking powder. We need two and a half teaspoons. We've got our teaspoon. Fill it up, level it off. You can see it's filled all the way to the top. One, two, and a half. You can see I've got all sorts of odds and ends of measuring spoons at this point from being an old person who's been cooking for a long time. Um, so you just have to look carefully on each measuring spoon. I don't know if you can even see, but this one says one teaspoon. This one says one half teaspoon. 
this one says one quarter, so yours will be labeled in some way. Uh, the next ingredient we need is a teaspoon of sugar. That off and put it in. Now just a quarter teaspoon of salt. Unfortunately, I only have uh, the big salt, kosher salt. We're out of regular salt, but uh, hopefully it won't make a huge difference. I'll just kind of sprinkle it all over. Quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Again, my little quarter teaspoon. Level it off. Make sure the quarter teaspoon is filled all the way to the top. Half teaspoon of garlic powder. dry ingredients like this. So just kind of stir it around until uh, everything's in even. Now to the most exciting part of making biscuits, which is cutting in the butter. So first I want to say a word about measuring the butter. This recipe calls for a third of a cup. Butter sticks are a half cup and they're divided on the side into tablespoons they are not divided into thirds. They do tell you on this package that five tablespoons is five and one third tablespoons is a third of a cup. So we're gonna count out one, two, three, four, five tablespoons, and then up here on the top, we're gonna to count out one third. Then we're going to cut exactly there, and that's going to give us third of a cup of butter. That's about this much. Take that butter, unwrap it at this point, now that you've measured it. Cut it into five or six even sized pieces. Sprinkle those your mix. And then, if you're lucky, this cool item called a pastry bun. Otherwise, you can mush it with your hands. You can take two knives and kind of almost make it look like you have a pair of scissors and cut the butter in like this. But both of those are kind of difficult and I love biscuits and pie crust so much that I bought myself this thing called a pastry blender. And all it does is it has sharp edges along here. It cuts the butter into the mixture. The butter is all in little pieces, which is exactly what we want. So what we want is when it's hot in the oven, to, uh, we want the butter to melt. And that's what really causes the delicious taste. One thing that always takes perseverance and some self-control for me in baking is making sure things really are mixed in well, not kind of just giving you a stir and quitting right away. Notice again with the milk, measure exactly up to the top of the cup. Stirring it in. Also at this point, you can add in your cheese. I'm not gonna add in my cheese until I take out a couple biscuits because one of my sons doesn't like cheese. So I'm gonna make him one too. Put the cheese in them, then I'm gonna mix in the cheese. Get my dairy-free muffins, well, cheese-free muffins. Baking pan, all ready to go. Take a spoonful, round it a little bit, plop it on the pan. This is what they're gonna look like on the pan, ready to go in the oven.
So for the topping, part of what makes them so incredibly delicious is we're gonna cut a stick of butter exactly in half. So we have a quarter of a cup of butter because a stick is a half cup. Two quarters make a half. Therefore, one quarter is half of a half. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it in a bowl and melt it in my microwave. You should melt it however your parent tells you is the way they prefer you to melt butter. My mom melts it on the stove. So we've got a quarter cup of melted butter. Now we're gonna take a half teaspoon more of garlic powder. And then I had to uh, use some creativity here, some problem solving because the recipe called for dried parsley and I only had fresh parsley. So I looked it up and um, a tablespoon of dried parsley, or fresh parsley, can replace a teaspoon of dried parsley. So here's my tablespoon of chopped up fresh parsley. Also going in there. this buttery mixture it's gonna go on top of the biscuits when they're done cooking. Now I've got my butter mixture and I'm just brushing it onto the tops of every biscuit. And there you have it, buttery delicious garlic cheddar biscuits. I hope you enjoy them.